Welcome to our review on sound properties and uses. So the first thing we actually need to understand then is what happens when a wave is going from one medium to another. So what we'll actually find here is that the first thing that could happen is something called refraction. And I've given you a little picture at the bottom to demonstrate this. So what we can see there is a pencil in a glass of water, but it doesn't look like it's in line anymore. And that's because we've actually refracted the wave because what's happening there is the wave is traveling from one medium, air, into another medium, water. And what we're seeing as a result of that is the velocity and the direction have changed to give us a different image. So if we consider a fraction in more detail then, what we actually find is that if our wave is moving from a less dense medium like air into a more dense medium like water, then the wave is going to slow down. And as it does so, assuming it's hit at an angle, it's going to bend towards the normal. And hopefully we remember that the normal is that line at 90 degrees to the surface. Now, what we'll find as a result of this is that the, the actual wave is going to bend. OK, second thing that's going to happen is the wavelength is going to decrease because we're going into a more dense medium. That means that those waves are going to get closer together, therefore decreasing the wave, wavelength. However, the frequency stays the same because what we've actually found there is that our velocity has decreased. The wavelength has also decreased. So therefore, the frequency remains the same. So I've given you a little diagram on the bottom left there to show you how this would be drawn in terms of a ray diagram. And you can see that each of those bits that have hit through the boundary, that blue line is our boundary, then show that they've changed their direction. And you can see that the space between them has also changed because what we've seen there is a change to the wavelength. Perhaps an easier way to think about it, if you're struggling to sort of visualize that, is if we've got a whole load of people all marching in a line. If they start off on a concrete surface, it's really easy to march on that. So what we're going to find is that they're going to be able to move nice and quick, all in line together. However, if they then hit this area that turns to sand, those that start marching on the sand first are going to slow down. So what we'll see is those lines are going to start to bend. So what we will see there is a little model that we can use in order to understand this. One thing to bear in mind, though, when we're talking about refraction is that if our sound wave hits the boundary at zero degrees to the normal, then we will change speed, but not direction, because obviously if everything's hitting at the exact same time, there's not going to be the bending there. So when we've got a wave that comes into contact with one of these boundaries between two mediums, then three things could happen. So as the wave hits, it could be reflected, which is what we see in terms of an echo. It could be transmitted, and this is one of those possibilities being refraction, or it could be absorbed. The next thing we're going to consider is a type of sound called ultrasound. You need to know the definition for it first of all, which is a sound of a frequency that's greater than 20,000 Hertz. And the thing to bear in mind about this is we can't hear it as humans. However, other animals, sort of animals like dogs, for example, they can hear ultrasound. Now, we use ultrasound quite a lot because it's actually very useful to us. It's got a short wavelength, which means that we can focus it into a beam. So the key way that we actually use ultrasound is in medicine. So we can use it to scan unborn babies. We can use it to monitor blood flow. And we can also use it to find and destroy kidney stones. Now, the way we actually do this is shown in the diagram on the top right there. So what we've actually got is an ultrasound transmitter and receiver, which is that weird thing they stick on the mother's belly when they're doing this on TV. And what that actually does is the transmitter beams the ultrasound wave into the patient. As those ultrasound waves travel down and they hit these different boundaries, then the waves are reflected back and detected by the receiver. Now, the time it's taken to actually go from the transmitter and be reflected back into our actual receiver is calculated using the machine there to actually work out the distance between obviously the actual transmitter and our baby. It then generates this brilliant image on the screen. 
Obviously, in the past, we used to have these very blurry ones, and you still get those to an extent in certain hospitals. But if you want to pay for it these days, you can, of course, have a 3D ultrasound, which is what you can see in the bottom there, which gives you quite amazing detail of what the baby will look like even before it's born. The other place that we can use ultrasound is in things called echo sounding or sonar. So we're going to use them here to calculate the depth of water. So very useful for fishermen and submarines there. They actually transmit these ultrasound pulses from the actual chip or the submarine down. And as it hits the seabed, it reflects back. And obviously the time it takes then allows them to calculate the distance because we know the velocity. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can describe how changes in velocity, frequency and wavelength are related when sound is moving from one medium to another. You can describe the effects of reflection, transmission and absorption at those boundaries. And you can also describe what we use ultrasound for.